Hello, my name is Big D Nathan. I've just finished beating Dark Souls 2 and its DLCs and I gotta say I'm kinda... conflicted. See, I knew going into this game that it's considered to be the least favorite out of the Souls trilogy. There are many people criticizing the game, but there are also many who stand behind it and try to show you the beauty in its ruggedness. Well, after beating Dark Souls 2, I'm left in a weird position. I don't think the game is either good or bad, I think it's both. There are many things the game does well in some parts and then completely drops the ball in another under the same category. So in this video, I wanna go over why a fresh Souls player like me thinks Dark Souls 2 is both good and bad. Now before we get started, quick shout out to our sponsor, you. You is a wonderful viewer sitting at home right now that is subscribing to the channel so we can get to 1000 subs. Shout out to you, now let's get started. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room, the story. As expected in a Dark Souls game, you enter a world that explains to you from the get-go that you are worthless and will die off soon. Kind of like real life. But, there is a way for you to free yourself from the curse, and it's by getting the four Lord Souls. Nido, Seath, Four Kings, and oh wait, that's the wrong game. Okay, the Iron King, the Lost Sinner, Duke's Dear Freya, and the Rotten. There we go, those are the right ones. See, most of the story in a Dark Souls game is explained to you through NPCs who tell you about the land and its history. In Dark Souls 1 we had Oscar who told us about the prophecy, Fram who explained about the Four Lords and Gwyn, and the dude in the beginning of the game that tells us about the Two Bells of Awakening. It just seems like no matter where you go, there are people who are ready to explain to you about the land you're traversing. And I just didn't get that feeling in Dark Souls 2. I felt like I was just running around and killing stuff because I knew I had to, which is fine. <laughs> but I love having an objective to work towards, and I don't think the game does a good job at explaining it to you. But all of that kind of changes once you beat the Four Lords. Then you get to meet Aldia. What the fuck? Piece of shit scared me. Hello. He finally gives you some sort of explanation about what you're doing, that there was a man named King Vendrick who has traversed on your same path and he warns you to seek him out. You go to Drag Lake and learn about the queen and the castle and the game does a far better job at conveying the story to you in its second half. But if I'm completely honest, this game's story wasn't as exciting as Dark Souls 1. 10 out of 10 in the Vati video though. Once the fire is linked, souls will flourish anew and all of this will play out again. Wait, did I beat the game? Alright, the second point I want to cover is the combat. Quick explanation about what I mean, I'm talking about equipment, leveling system, HP and stamina, basically everything that makes a direct impact on your combat. Now the unkin observer would say, well Nathan, the combat system is exactly like Dark Souls 1. Attacking is the same, so is leveling up, the upgrade system, the stamina bar, and to them I say, listen here Dumbo, if I'm fighting this dude and I heal for this much, every frame, I'm screwed. A lot of weird things were added to this game I feel like, with the most obvious one being adaptability. Having your iframes tied to a stat is just completely useless, blah blah blah, you know what I'm saying. But you also have shitty stamina recovery, your equipment breaks from farts, you get hit by stuff that shouldn't hit you, enemies feel less inspired, and the entire gameplay loop is a lot slower than Dark Souls 1. But you know what? Best backstab ever. This mechanic alone was enough to cheer me up and carry me throughout this game. But on top of that, you have incredible weapons, armor choices, some good buffs you can pick up, and leveling feels a lot easier than Dark Souls 1. So yeah, the combat system is definitely not bad, but it had some weird additions that I really didn't like. Okay, 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 let's talk about the reason you clicked on this video. The bosses. I think it's pretty unanimous that the bosses are the best part in FromSoft games. That feeling you get when you beat a boss that you were stuck on, or when you meet a boss that completely blows your mind by his moveset. That feeling is amazing. I honestly think that FromSoft has set a precedent in my mind of what a good boss fight is. Now that's not to say that they can always pull it off, because oh boy are we about to talk shit on some bosses. Okay, hold on, let me flip a coin, I'm gonna see what I'm gonna start off with, the good or the bad. Heads is good, tails is bad. Okay, let's start off with the good. I mean, what can I say really that hasn't been said before me? When FromSoft pulls it off, they do it big time. Flashy moves, dope design, incredible phase changes, secret mechanics, puzzles, tricks, all whilst your butthole is clenched harder than when your mom walks in on you with the incognito window open. If you know what I'm talking about. See this dude? That's Sir Alan. 
He's a samurai giant dude with a massive sword or katana or whatever they're called. And his moveset is one of the coolest I have ever seen. I mean, just look at this. This guy is one of my favorite bosses in the game. And he goes to show the caliber of what they are capable of pulling off. But then you see stuff like this. Mid. Trash. Mid. Mid. Trash. Trash. Mid. Okay? Trash. Just why? From soft. I understand that not every boss is going to be enjoyable for me and not every boss is going to be at an incredibly high caliber but some of these boss fights just made me sad whether the design was cool but the boss was too easy the fight was unfair and unenjoyable or the boss design was literally worse than one of the simple enemies in the game I mean this guy is even better than this guy a lot of the bosses in this game felt uninspired and rushed, but the one who pissed me off the most was the Burnt Ivory King. Literally, top 3 bosses in the game, hidden behind the worst first phase I have ever seen. An unfair gank that you have to redo over and over to get to him. That sucks. I think nowadays FromSoft has mastered the formula much better than what they had in Dark Souls 2. But yeah, if I had to average out the bosses, it would probably be a 5 out of 10. And just because I think some people would want to know, here are my top 5 bosses from low to high. Smelter Demon, Throne Watcher and Defender, Burnt Ivory King, Suralan, and Fume Knight. Honorable mention to the Pursuer. Although I beat him first try, I loved the fact that you kept on meeting him in the game. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is kind of two points at once, as they are sort of tied together. Areas and exploration. I think FromSoft managed to do something that not many developers have. You enter a world that is extremely unforgiving. It seems like everything is out to get you, from monsters to gravity itself. But despite that difficulty, you want to explore every single part of the land. And Dark Souls 2 gives you a lot of nice and unique ways on how to do so. You have the Fragrant Branch of Yore and the Pharaoh's Lockstone, two rare items in the game that are used to open up either blockaded or secret paths. And most of the time there is a rewarding pickup at the end to justify your use of a rare item. Having mechanics like this in the game makes exploration so rewarding and thrilling because you don't know what's hiding behind the wall. Take a look at this for example, I used the Pharaoh's Lockstone in a completely random location, went to explore what's behind it and to my surprise I met a familiar face from Dark Souls 1. And at another spot all I got was close to a useless item, I love these two mechanics in the game and I think they added a lot of depth. But here is my problem with areas in this game. This is Dragon Airy, one of the most aesthetically pleasing areas in the game. Running around in this area looking for Dragon Shrine was really cool. There is nothing flashy or exciting here when it comes to combat, but it doesn't matter. But then take a look at this area, and this one, and this one, and this one. I mean, is it just me or is there nothing in these areas? It just seems like a really bad and lazy filler. It's understandable that not every place is like Iron's Keep or Drenglay Castle, but come on man, put some effort into it. It feels like a reoccurring theme in this game is quantity over quality. Not a lot of things were thought out, areas weren't designed with the intent to be difficult yet fair but only frustrating, and even if there is some good in these areas, they're completely overshadowed by everything else surrounding them. How could you be this good at something but also responsible for this? It's like if I had the cooking skills of Gordon Ramsay but I would also burn cereal and eat soup with chopsticks. If I had to give an example to what playing Dark Souls 2 is like, I would have to say an abusive relationship. So many things that make you feel good and surprise you and make you want to stay and keep going, yet other things that make you sad and hate yourself like nothing else. There is without a doubt merit to what people who criticize this game have to say. Because to me it's not up to par with what From Software has shown me that they're capable of doing. But I also believe in some of what the people who support this game have to say. There are many things that this game bangs right on the head. But listen, at the end of the day, you won't know if this game is good or not until you play it. And if you have played it, whether you enjoyed it or not is completely fine either way. If I had to give my peace of mind, I'd say it's probably a no repeat for me, but I am glad I had the experience. Before we part ways, I want to thank you for watching this video. Please do consider subscribing, stay natty, peace out.